All right, let's uh, get the ball rolling. Uh, let me get the slide running. Uh, welcome to our talk. So, so, go ahead, we're going to talk about computer vision. Right, exactly. It's, it's, it's spelled out, right? Computer vision, that's what we're going to be talking about. Uh, let's go through our quick intro, intro real quick. Um, my name is Min Mong. Um, I am a uh, managing architect at Concurrency. Um, I have worked on mobile IoT, uh, and lately I've been working on IoT projects. Uh, sorry, not IoT projects, but uh, also AI-related uh, projects, uh, <laughs> ranging from uh, vision to uh, 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 conversational AI and bots and so on and so forth. Yeah, funny enough, I am uh, Luen, I'm his brother, obviously you know that, and uh, at this point my name's there. Uh, we, I, funny enough, I also work at Concurrency as a principal architect. I am, um, you know, uh, just like in life, I guess, uh, being an older brother, uh, you know, I, I started off there and then Min joined us, you know, et cetera, yeah. and it's been working together on a lot of the fun projects as well, and a lot of these uh, interesting, you know, futuristic things. Well, I'm actually going to say futuristic, however, the future is now, and then we actually move the future towards uh, today, and, you know, uh, myself, right? I'm also an MVP in, in Windows platform, just like Manus, and we actually uh, have fun stuff with uh, AI, ML, and, and anything in touch with artificial intelligence as well as you know uh, devices and, and applications. Yeah, the full full integration from end to end. Yeah. Well, end to end, right? Is is how we all started. You know, this is the type of things we do for fun, and some of you guys may have seen it. Yeah, that's the reason why we're bringing this up ahead of time. So. Uh, we'll, we'll bring this uh, conversation point later down down in the in the demo point. But we started off building a big robot out of BBC pipes and frames, uh, chasing you know rabbits and uh, and humans in our backyard, right? So that's what we started off from. Uh, yeah. And go ahead. Well, the hole in the middle is for you know something else, right? If you think about it, it's still cut long. We drop a long over in there, but that's well, we'll, we'll get there eventually. All right, you want to talk about current state of AI, real quick? Yeah. So the current state of AI, so we, we, we think of, we're hearing a lot of AI talks. Uh, we, you know, we, we're obviously talking about AI today too, but I mean, there, there's, you know, pros, cons, all these uh, concerns, how do we implement it? And there's a future vision of like where things are just going to be doing, you know, the, the systems are, systems and machines are going to be think, doing things for us. So let's take a look at uh, what it looks like. So today, right, if you look at artificial intelligence and landscape as a whole, as you can see on the on the screen right now, what we're looking at is things like uh, autonomous settings, uh, systems and whatnot, right? Uh, machine learning, those are the items that we can actually accomplish right now. So if you look at this as a clock diagram, right, we start at 12 o'clock in, uh, uh, you know, in, 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 at midnight. If, as we come down, right, at 6 a.m., we are somewhere around, you know, 5.36 ish right now, right, easily. Uh, we've gone through all of these various different stages of machine learning, deep learning, you know, uh, neural network. Those are the current stage and current accomplished items, right? As we can actually come around the circle, on the other side are the futuristic items right. that we're looking at, and those are about anywhere between six months to five years out. And depending on the industries that Lauren and I have worked on, I mean, we, we've worked on stuff from machine learning to deeper learning to, you know, like natural language processing, and as well as, you know, conversational. Uh, AI uh, chatbot type of things, right? So we are seeing things almost at the six o'clock point uh, uh, in this slide. Yeah, and the, today, right, what we're going to talk about computer vision is going to be a part of somewhere around three thirty ish, right? The pattern recognition, some of these uh, network and, and uh, recognition of various different uh, things using computer vision is what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, let's talk about the actual, you know, partial use, uh, potential use of AI today and see what we can, what we have done, right? What we can do uh, out of box right now, even from uh, with tools from Microsoft, Google, you know, Amazon, so on and so forth. Right. So in terms of uh, visualization, I mean, we, there is, um, there are several uh, API endpoints and services that uh, Microsoft exposes to us, not just through Microsoft, but through uh, different uh, uh, technology partners out there as well. Um, one of the key things that's, that's easy to implement that is out there is uh, face recognition uh, to identify your face. We do have a good portion of us uses our phones uh, uh, facial recognition to log in. So there's that piece component already uh, implemented through a lot of the stuff. Uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, push for personal uh, assistance, which means like Alexa devices, 
uh, you know, uh, Google and Siri devices, right? Uh, and there's going to be a lot of integration and push for those type of uh, uh, tooling on there. The, the interesting but a little bit harder thing that you're going to start seeing next is uh, natural language processing, where you actually need a gobs and gobs of data to uh, start training the models. But uh, so with natural language processing, we're dealing with things such as uh, if I write a, an email, it actually detects what I, it understands what, that uh, I'm actually trying to make an order or trying to do something else, right? B based on the context that I'm writing, writing in the emails. So, I, you know, when you look at natural language processing, and you know, we're, we're implying that this is actually more like, you know, how I would talk to you or how a human being would process a particular sort of information. Right. right. So, like, if I'm telling you, that like, like, let's say, give me a, I want a two x two um, piece of wood. In your head, you go, oh yeah, I know what it is. It's two. I want you want a two by four, and you may just reply saying. What's the length that you want? Right. Correct. Right. So the computer doesn't know that, so we're going to actually train it. Exactly. Yeah. And then you and then you take that existing model and you can start doing more deeper learning. You know, uh, you know, and just keep uh, retraining the models to get better and better. Right. And then so this is a curve that we that I've worked on on my side of things. I know you've worked on a different set of things. Uh, some of it overlaps. Oh yeah, some of these overlap right? in terms of visualization. Obviously, you know, uh, uh, a vision to figure out whether or not I can let somebody into the door, right? That's tough. That, you know, that's always a, a, a go-to. And then, you know, looking at the audio uh, analytics uh, area, you know, we eventually use in uh, machine learning algorithm to figure out, uh, you know, a, a, a high pitch of a drilling, uh, you know, from from a dentist, right? To figure out where, when 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 you're mixed. Uh, that particular bit is going to break. You know, that, that, that's interesting. Uh, you know, yeah, you don't want to start the. You don't want to, you know, dental drill. You know, like breaking no. in your mouth, right? That yeah. would be painful. And then, as it as it turns out, you know, rather than implementing a whole new uh, drilling machine, right, for for a dentist, it's easier to actually monitor the frequency and figure out when certain you know uh, predictive maintenance is going to happen on, on on things like that, right? With image anal uh, analytics, I can actually look at an image and tell you what the predominant colors are you know, uh, as well as figure out text on it you know, to figure out whether or not a vehicle is moving, that kind of stuff. So, you know, we, we've done some very, very interesting things, right? Including all the way from uh, Internet of Things and robotics and, and, and so on and so forth. But when you look at IoT and robotics as well, I'm looking at more of that area as a data ingestion point and then, then data, you know, exit point Correct. or uh, manipulation, well, actually ingestion and manipulation points, right? That's what we're looking at. Like moving on, let's talk about how to train AI, right? Like, you know, the, I think that's what, you know, the interesting part is, right? AI is new to a lot of us, and we need to figure out what is it going to take for us to train it. And today we're going to actually talk about training as well as figure, you know, showing you guys uh, what exists out there, the tooling that exists, and how easy it is and how hard it can be as well, right? The things that we talk about, natural language processing, that is a long and tedious process of numerous training over training over training. And, you know, you need, what is it like? You know, if I want to, you know, look at an uh, email training, for example, or, or to read a, a particular message, right? How many, how many various previous uh, uh, data set data points do I need for that kind Some, of stuff? Yeah, I mean, sometimes you know, you were thinking like, you know, let's just toss five emails at it and, and start a model. No, it, it you actually need a, a crap of a lot more emails than that, like in the tens of thousands of emails. Yeah. So some of this. Models we're going to show today and some of the training we're going to show today is going to be easier and, and they're going to look simpler. However, right, keep in mind that when you're looking at production level, we're looking at, you know, you know, lots and lots of training and lots of, lots of uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, research that comes along with it. And, you know, it's something else that I want to bring up is you can just copy and paste a training model either, right? We can just make one data into another data. It doesn't work that way. No. Uh, a lot of the times the data might look similar, so you might be able to use a similar type of algorithm. However, the actual end result might diverge completely depending on the data set in, in the industry that you're in. Yeah. So that will be a, you know, that, that will be the, the you know, the, the, the caveat on that as well. You know, personally speaking, right, this is, uh, it's kind of like that, right? You know, when you're looking at a kid, as, a, as it turns out, this is my, my, my son when he was uh, maybe a few uh, weeks old at the time, I think it was about three, four weeks old when we took the picture. He's now seven seven months old, crawling around now, and actually knows certain things, right? And, and certain things, 
and, and looking at his brain development and, and figuring out how he's recognizing, you know, things like, you know, a bottle of milk or twice or, you know, uh, uh, certain, uh, uh, you know, comfort uh, items, right? This is the same way that he's training himself. It's the same way a robot would train or, or an AI would train as right. well. But the only the biggest difference is a, a, a living being is capable and they're, they're analyzing and, you know, figuring things out at much, much more complex things, rates that, than, uh, the than, AI than the AI would, because we actually have to train the AI to think of all these different potential things that the, that, you know, the human brain all is uh, trying to figure things out. So what do we mean by that? Uh, we can actually train anything to, we can train an AI to think that a dog is a cat and a cat is a dog, right? So that causes a lot of complications on the line when you, uh, you know, trying to take care of, you know, if you have like a pest control robot that actually wants to get rid of cats from your yard, instead it's actually getting rid of all the dogs in your yard, right? That, that would be a horrible consequence. Yeah. And, you know, as funny as it sounds, at one time I was telling my wife, right, I think we should actually call a cat, you know, doggy and dog, you know, kitty and see what happens. And, uh, yeah, that, you know, as it turns out, it's a horrible idea anyway. Yeah. But I can do that, uh, you know, with the AI model. So, you know, the aim is this, right? We are not trying to create a, uh, a, a models where it, become, it can become dangerous. So tell me about how you would train and, you know, what it takes to train that. So you, you start really from a zero dimension. So like you, you want to start with one dimensional information, right? So when, we, when I say one dimensional in terms of like computer vision, right? Um, a black and white is one, dim one dimensional. Once you add the color, it's another dimensional. So like, it's not just detecting the object and training the object inside it to be a circle, a dog or a cat or a human. It's, it's also like the minute you add additional layers to it, um, video, sound, all of that, you keep adding multiple layers to it. So even with image, going back to the image, like forget video and sound right now, with just image, you have black and white, you now have color. In color, are we looking at the reds, the greens, the yellows or the blues, what are we looking at, right? So you can add multitude of information that you're trying to be analyzing that uh, sometimes you're like humans can detect like, you know, a little, you know, the, the sh a tiniest shade difference and that triggers something else to recognize a, a pattern or something like that, right? And so we're yeah. looking for that type of training and it becomes complex, more and more complex. Yeah, I mean, as it turns out, right, if you look at a, a automotive dashboard, for example, right, you might actually have a a red light indicator and, a, and an orange light indicator for the for the gas tank. Right, it will, it will show up the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, red means that you are actually going to be you know pushing your car soon, whereas yellow means that you know you, you might have another you know ten more miles to to go get it filled. Right, so any of these things we learned it through through years and years of this you know intuitive uh, training that we, we went through with the AI to feature it and, and and show them that even the color matters. Right. Yeah. All right. So tell me, right, in, in this case, by training it wrong, are we actually going to start a new war, right? Are we actually going to contaminate a situation? How can we actually use this for good as well? So we often hear like the latest in, but things that, that, uh, that people are using AI. We, we're hearing like AI is going to replace jobs and stuff like that. But there's a project that I'm, I'm working on with a client of ours uh, with global imaging. Uh, we are building a AI for good, uh, conversational AI on there. And it's an open source project that um, we're trying to make uh, in the process of getting it fully open source out there. Um, what it does is it's, a, it's to help folks with uh, uh, disabilities, right? Um, we have actually used this conversational AI to help the picking process in a warehouse for folks with uh, autism as well as with Down syndrome. And their, their pick rate is almost comparable to a regular, you know, person that is going through and picking it through. So yeah, they have yeah. a headset, they have a microphone, but there is a conversational um, com component to it where it's just talking to you throughout the whole process where it's like, hey, go, go to this, I'll pick on this thing. Uh, I want 22 items of this. And then if it's not the two items, if, it, if they pick the wrong item, it's just, it will tell you stuff like, hey, you know what? Uh, you pick the wrong item, the, the item you're looking for is, you know, two hours to the, Two, uh, two boxes to the left or to the right or up or down, right? 
Yeah, it makes it, it makes a human being, or rather a uh, you know a person with disability, more productive in in this day and age, right? A lot right. of a, 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 it's uh, a life coach. Yes, it's a life coach. It's it's there to make it you know be a part of us, uh, and they and these people don't feel like you know they are you know excluded out of the society. They they walk alongside with us and do the same functions as we do. And be a part of, part of uh, you know, contributing members of the society as well, which, right. is, which is wonderful for everybody, right? Yep. Yeah, additionally, I also want to talk about, like, you know, new vision of AI, right? This is something that is not new to us. People actually look at AI and say, oh, wow, this is new, right? We've been using AI for a long time. You know, the, 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 uh, we've been using AI, you know, NASA has been using AI to actually discover exoplanets outside and figure out if there are any other additional things, right? I have co-workers that I that have used AI to actually figure out cancerous cells in various different, uh, you know, uh, parts of the body. In this case, right, the picture that you see on the on the bottom left, uh, so uh, is is the um, you know uh, cancerous cells in in a lung and figuring out which pieces are more uh, contagious to a human being, right? And and the biggest AI thing that you guys see out on the street right now is Tesla, right? Now, if you look at Tesla itself, they are using AI and and seven different cameras within a vehicle to figure out how a vehicle will move without a human interaction. So the AI has actually come a long way with the, with the speed and the process of computers. So let's talk about actually you know, looking at the real life demos and, and AI itself. So sure. uh, first thing first, right? I actually mean, you know, people gonna get ready on this. Uh, one of the items that we're gonna bring up right here is actually a, um, uh, a project that you know both of us worked on, right? For a client of ours out in uh, uh, Ohio, right? This particular client actually has uh, gobs and gobs of data in terms of uh, tunnels, and and in this case sewers, right? In in uh, for a government project. So these guys actually have to uh, you know figure out how you know type of cracks in a in a in a sewer tunnel. And in this case, I believe this is either for the city of Akron or Cincinnati. I do not remember. Uh, so we actually figure out out of uh, 250 you know, different type of cracks, right? We actually um, use artificial intelligence and data to, to uh, alleviate the processing of, you know, uh, of data uh, for us, right? From uh, uh, that, that can actually show up uh, in a matter of literally, instead of taking somebody hours to figure out this thing, we can actually take an hour worth of data and we can, we can uh, process it in about you know, six minutes. So we actually cut down the magnitude of time, right? And, and we'll show you how this actually happens. In this case, we can actually go to any sequence within, within the video itself, and I can actually tell you what the probability of a particular crack or lack thereof is. So if you scroll down on the side menu, go down to a place where, yeah, pick up yeah. something with a crack on it, right? You so will this, actually see that there was a crack on the- This one didn't find anything, right? This is not available, but there is one with issues. So you see that there's at least a scene here. Yeah. And this is coming from a you know, video feed. We actually, what we did was we actually take the video feed, slice it up, and then we actually figure out where in the different time stems certain things happen, and then you know, uh, repeat and, and verify. So, so let's talk about- the crack, right? Yeah. Nice. So let's talk about actually how you would train, man. I will leave it up to you right now. So how you would normally train is, um, I, we are uh, heavily involved uh, using uh, projects using our custom vision, uh, .ai. Um, and what we end up doing is you want to create a new project. Um, so let's go through that process real quick. Give it a project name. So um, in the description is demo. And what I'm going to do is it's going to be a classification uh, because we want to um, determine whether it's going to be a crack or not a crack or so on and so forth. And uh, you can you can actually do a single single tag per image or multiple tags per image. Um, normally we choose single tag, uh, and then uh, we and then you want to choose the domain of areas so that it actually helps um, your model a little bit better. But um, normally, you know, most of our stuff that we've been doing have been kind of unique in the sense that um, it's not in in any of these categories. So normally you put you pick general. So here's where things get interesting when you choose. Um, because general versus compact. Do you want to talk a little yeah, bit sure. about that one? So in general, when you're using general, uh, a lot of the data you're looking at will actually stay within Microsoft. Uh, in this case, uh, custom vision or AI, and, and, and it's useful actually expanding that data, uh, data knowledge uh, more and more, right? 
uh, when we actually use a compact model, I can actually use it to export the data out afterwards, right? After once this is uh, created to a compact um, uh, framework that I can actually then deploy to other devices. For example, I can actually take the data out of it as an Onyx model or as a TensorFlow model, right? That we can actually then reuse to expand upon it using our data science, uh, you know, uh, tools outside of this particular tool set. Uh, initial original training is get, you know, gets done on this particular tool set and then we actually expand it out. So what you will see is we will actually, uh, you know, have a program that we created this particular model on. We take the model out of it into an Onyx model and then we'll actually put it on a, a robot, for example, right? That's no longer connected to the internet. And then I can actually, you know, use it to, uh, you know, evaluate certain things, right? So here's, here's what, uh, our early early inference to the uh, the robot video com comes back in. So we have a robot that is doing the lawn mowing, and we we want to make sure that we don't hurt any creatures that are out there, right? Um, we want to detect those things. So we have a classification uh, model out there uh, with the same specifications that we just talked about for that detects whether there is a cat and whether there's a rabbit or whether there's a rabbit, right? So they, we have both cats, rabbits, and you know what? Sometimes it, it becomes, you know, gory and, it, you know, you can get a rabbit's nest. So we have all of those conditions out there. Um, and, and so this is where things get a little bit interesting. So I, we started off with um, 19 images of cats that we uploaded. So you, you, you go over here, um, you go to add images, you select, um, Cats, and you select however many images that you want. When you click open, you can tag, you can add tag on here for cat. So this is how you train it, right? This is like if I'm teaching my uh, my son, right? Eventually, this is hey, this is the, what a, what a cat looks like. This is your exactly telling the computer or, or, or artificial intelligence what a cat is, correct? Correct. But notice how how is how I'm trying to make it as diverse as I, I can, right? I have different colors of the cats. I try to have different background colors too, but um, in this case, it's, going, it's a robot that's gonna be out there in the, in the grass. So we want a lot of green background. So this is that other end dimension that you need to start thinking about when you are training these models. What's the application? So um, in case you know, you're gonna be driving on concrete, you, know, you may have a lighter shade of color, different colors for different cats, right? And also different angles. So the more angles and the more shots of the same thing that you have, the better it's gonna get trained to detect the, the, the creature. So likewise, I have a similar thing for rabbits. Um, and I have some face shots of rabbits and I have a lot of side profile of rabbits. So what does that mean? If, I, if you take a picture of a rabbit face on, it may not detect the rabbit as a rabbit, you need to detect it as a cat. It's just a heads up. And also rabbits have you know pointy ears, so those, those are the things that the AI is gonna start detecting. It's gonna uh, start ignoring more of the green stuff and try focusing more on the color and the shape of the stuff, all right? So once you upload all of this, uh, you click on the train model, and then uh, you can do either a quick train or advanced train. Uh, I normally do a quick train just so that you know I, I'm I'm actually less patient and I'm going to see uh, the instant results. So this usually takes about five to 10 minutes depending on how much image and how much data you have, you have uploaded. Yeah, when you do advanced training, you actually go through cycles and you can actually leave it on for hours at a time, right? So that the computer can actually analyze various images in depth, in uh, you know sizes, resolution, as well as the, the actual content behind the scenes as well. Right, so once everything is trained, so uh, once everything's trained, you can actually go and click on quick test. At this point, you are allowed to upload any uh, image from your computer uh, or from, put it in a URL. And depending on which iteration, so if you have multiple training, so you start off with you know five images and, and then you realize you need more images, so you add another 100 more images, so you're gonna have multiple iterations at that point. You yeah, can great. select and see how it's different from each iteration. So uh, right now, let's go and try to upload an image. I, I have actually, I have a sample set that I usually keep that is just for cats and rabbits, and then I have a third one for just test. This is not any of the stuff that I, I've actually um, trained it with. 
So let's try this cat right now. So it, it has a 99.5% 90, accuracy that it's a cat. It thinks that there's a 0.2% chance that it's a rabbit and multiple rabbits, and that there's all these other uh, detections that we are not choosing. Now, let's check this scenario out with the um, with a human cat. Guess what? It still detects it as a cat. It probably detects the color, the shape, and the pointy ears of that. Now, things get interesting when you start using this. You see the cat probability and the rabbit probability is almost very close to each other. The reason behind that is the rabbits are pointy ears and all the rabbit models that I have used, or high, pro, high percentage of my rabbit models that I've used, uses brown rabbits. And with pointy ears. And with pointy ears, right. So if we choose a rabbit like this and train it and check it out, it's now you can see that it's 75.6% accurate. And this is a plush toy, right? Uh, so let's choose another one that is out in the wild. And look how small the image is, right? In this case, you're looking at about 100 by 100 pixels on, on this particular image, and you can still recognize this kind of uh, deprivation from, from this uh, small image scale. So this is just with, this is just using 20, 22 images just to detect this type of creature, right? Uh, if I want to do a quick test, one last one last one with, uh, let's just say, um, I I know that this don't fail. Um, this this we know that it's a rabbit, but obviously it's an animation rabbit. Um, it it has time to detect that it's also a cat. Still a high probability because we've done numerous trainings to detect that a pointy ear um, is a, a rabbit on that. If we choose this, um, the rabbit probability is, is still high, but not as accurate, right? So in general, um, in terms of uh, confidence scores and stuff like that, you know, you will have to detect it based on your model and how how conf confident your your model is detecting. You'll have to test it out and see, you know, uh, if you want to, in, like at what level you detect, you, you deem that your model detects a rabbit, you know, an item or not, right? Yeah, and additionally, I mean, this is a rabbit for us, right? This is actually a good model. <clears throat> excuse me, good model for us to use because we actually have a robotic lawnmower. On the other hand, whatever if you want to actually use it in the factory floor. So we actually stimulated another another model. We actually uh, have a very similar type of uh, scenario for a, a different uh, manufacturing client, right? That, that is actually creating, uh, uh, in this case, lumber and steel. Uh, and you know, and, and, and both of these clients actually need a quality control at the end of the day. Right. So you're looking at this kind of type of work, right? So in this case, what we're looking at is you know washers, right? Let's, let's assume that for our quick purposes, again, right? In real life training for a real life client or a real life actual production unit, you're looking at tens of thousands of images and uh, recognize you know training model. We are, you know, doing this as a demo for a quick and easy, you know, uh, we're simplifying this, if you will, right? And we have, right now we have 10 washers uh, that are good washers, and then we have 12 that we have set our defects. Obviously, you know, these these are not real defective washers, they are actually split washers. Right, so anything that's actually got a split in the washer, we're calling it a defect for now, and, and we train it such as, like Min said, so in this case, we can actually run it through our program, and then we can actually show the you know some of the code that you know show up as well, and and this is a uh, offline model at this point, right? Yeah. So um, there is there is a you know just take a look at these things. Uh, just remember that we'll, we'll be coming back to that in a second. So what I am going to do next is in my um, in my performance, I click on the performance tab, and once I have a trained model, depending on which iteration, you can actually export it to uh, whichever uh, type of model that you want to work on afterwards. So um, we, we talk about Microsoft, but the thing is they are trying to be very agnostic so that you know you can use the, their tooling to help you with uh, TensorFlow or uh, you know Apple or anything else out there. So we normally just use Onyx. It's Onyx is more of a um, agnostic uh, AI model. So we uh, you click on Onyx. Um, and then uh, you can ex 
export, you can click on download and it will export it out. In we wrote a real quick uh, Visual Studio Code application that is going to take a, a video webcam uh, info, and we're going to uh, detect if, uh, whether it's going to take those models. So I have a Onyx model in here uh, oops, that I have downloaded, uh, and this is the same model that we are using for uh, for uh, all of the washers as well as the, the bunnies and the cats, right? So let's run it and see how that looks like. And we can zoom in and show you the show you portions of the code afterwards as well, just if you're curious, right? Yep. Uh, but the lines uh, of code that actually processes it is actually very minimum uh, once you train this model ahead of time. So there is some good news to all of this. Uh, Luen actually has a kid, and I, I get a good uncle, and so I can actually got flush toys for him. Nothing like driving a kid. Yeah, do it early. So here we go. It is detecting that this is a 80% chance that it's a cat. Um, and, and notice how fuzzy it is, the, the image quality is. Um, and it's still detecting that it's a, it's a cat, right? Um, depending on which angle we choose. Now, I'm going to switch it up and put a rabbit in front of it. And it should switch over to a rabbit shortly. As soon as it recognizes the it recognizes the uh, the, the, the ears, right? And the, and the face. Or if the camera focuses. So you know what? I'm gonna take this thing. Um, and this is this all based on lighting. But lighting apparently is a big issue when you deal with uh, cats and rabbits. Actually give me the green um, Clock, and we're yeah, going to try we're actually fake that it is actually out in the wild. But this is not actually green, but it's teal enough. It's greenish enough. And I'm going to rerun this thing again okay, one more time. So there you go, that, that is it detecting as a rabbit. The, the reason why it probably didn't detect that it's a rabbit uh, is, you see how a lot of this is uh, dark gray background? Um, so it's it, it makes it really hard for it to detect that it's a rabbit sometimes uh, due to the fact that um, the, 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 the dimension is all messed up, right? With a cat, uh, we have trained it a few of them with, um, with the right face angles and so on and so forth, we detect that uh, it has a higher probability in the cat side of things. Moving on, we actually have a semi-production line washer detection detector that is going on using the same model. You can see that it detects it's a washer if it's if it is a white background. Uh, the reason why I bring up this now is in our model, a lot of our backgrounds, a lot of our trainings had a lot of white backgrounds. Um, we actually had to incorporate a few uh, defect models, uh, defect images with a, uh, with a black background so that it starts detecting the, uh, the washer as a defective washer. Right? So what we ended up doing initially was that when we trained it, right, rather than training it to be a defective versus a, a you know, a good uh, a product, we were training it to be black or white, right? So essentially, you, uh, you know, we did a wrong thing by showing them the, uh, you know, the, the type of images, images right. matter in this case, and the type of data that flows in there makes a big difference. Right, so, I mean, what we're looking at here is, I, we had to addition, this is why, in the second iteration, we actually trained it with the washers. In the third iteration, I had to include these three images um, to do it, right? And then what we're also uh, realizing is if it is, um, if it is white, uh, if it is just a black background, it doesn't do a, as good of an accuracy check whether it's a wash or not, uh, versus if it is like pure white, it will do a higher accuracy of uh, it being uh, a 
a washer because all our all our good washers are done with a white background. Yeah, originally when we trained right. it. Right. And if you really think about it, it's amazing that it's actually tracking that it's a good washer based on just one, two, maybe three images, um, three good ones, because these don't actually count because they they are different. You want to have very similar identical images to determine whether it's a washer or not. Different angles, different colors, different uh, depth matter. So that, I mean, that's why we also have like this lighting, uh, you know, this little lamp in here uh, that we are actually, you know, trying to uh, simulate as good uh, lighting conditions as we can, right? So if we want to, if you guys want to take a look at the code, um, can, you just, can you zoom in for it real quick? Yeah. Pulling into the code. So when you click on the timer button, uh, the Onyx detection button, which is in the bottom right corner of the screen, this one, um, what it does is it starts a timer, and on a timer, it's actually taking a snapshot every so often. So hey guys, could you zoom in a little bit more? Um, we're the sure. I don't I think are you streaming through OBS because I think that we're having a bit of de degradation in the video. We're not. We're not. Ah, that the, uh, might be. Okay. Thank you. Is this any better now? Yeah. Yeah, a little. We'll zoom in. Bit. Yeah. Let me see how the quality is hitting us right now. I think we need a little bit more. More? Okay. You got it. Keep going. Yeah. More? Uh, you yeah, try one more. Think, it, yeah, if you can. Change the resolution on that. I'm going to change the resolution. You're running a 4K, right? Yeah, that's the other issue. Uh, let's reduce it to 1080. There you go. That should do the trick. How is that? That's good. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so what we what you what we're doing is every every second or so it takes a snapshot and it's actually um, doing a capture stream of the image. Um, so the videos get converted to image, um, and then we we make sure that there is a model. If the model is not null, we initialize an Onyx model. Um, there is code for that. The Onyx model initialization looks like this. So there is a uh, there's a helper for this that actually loads it based on the Onyx uh, file name. So this is our detection the Onyx model that we are actually loading, uh, and then there's an interval on that. Uh, set up on that. So so it loads them just in case there isn't one it loads it. Otherwise it, it converts it into a bitmap right here um, based on the video frame. And then it actually evaluates the video frame as an image. So when it evaluates it, it makes sure over here that um, that uh, it's gonna give you all of the information in here. So I'm gonna put a breakpoint there and and we will see um, what it's detecting. So here's a list of labels that it detected. Um, and then it's going to do a bunch of things. Uh, and it does, and it also has a list of things that are a loss, which means that it is your accuracy, uh, uh, accuracy information. So it's going to do uh, what the key is and then what the value is going to be. So this is um, the key meaning whether it is a washer or whatnot. So the, the string at the end of the day that I'm displaying on the UI shows key, value, key, value, so on and so forth, right? Uh, so it actually runs through all the whole entire model and it, it maps and makes sure that, you know, it gives you the result set that you're looking for, which is this. All right, hopefully, right, this actually should give us a clue in terms of how easy and yet it can be a complicated matter, right, in, uh, as, as you guys can actually, you know, just do at this point on, um, you know, where, where this thing is going to take us, right? Uh, do you guys have any questions or anything like that right now uh, for, for, for us? Uh, 
hopefully this is something that we can actually you know help with, right? And then and hopefully you get clarity on 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 how this uh, system evolves and and how it is done so far. Did we check any of the questions potentially? Uh, I'm not sure if we we'll check, you know, if we we'll actually look at it. If there are any questions coming in for us. I don't see anything in the uh, chat at this time. If there's anything that you guys want to see in terms of like try to play with the model, let me know. I, and and uh, we can definitely do that in the next 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. Or actually more like five minutes. <laughs> right. Because the next, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to eat into the next session, but um, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. If I'm not seeing it, that means hopefully you guys learn, you know, enough from this, right, to to figure out that this is a, you know, easy concept to get along. However, it is also hard to actually train it right as well. Right. right. As you can see, we went through a, a numerous uh, items with uh, rabbits and and even washers and and so on and so forth. Right. Yeah. I mean, the the biggest thing is like, even with a small data set, you can kind of see you can get an idea of what you're trying to get into, but you really need a huge data set to get to the perfection that you want. And oftentimes, you know, don't be discouraged by not getting 100%. That's all I can tell you. Yeah. Right? 100% is going to be, well, very hard to obtain, right? Right. Anything above, I would say 70% is usable, uh, you know, for human, human quality. Anything above, you know, let's say 80, 90% is, you know, pretty much machine perfect at that point. Uh, due, due to a lot of the various models, right? depending on what it is, right? I mean, right. obviously, uh, some need higher accuracy than others, you know, if you're looking at uh, various levels of inputs, you know, so on and so forth as well. And this stuff is just getting exposed to us um, at a very early phase right now. Uh, you know, like no one's really, it, it's not too late to get into the game on this right now, right? Uh, in terms of whether for your industry or for your hobbies, whatever you want. Um, and all the demos today, we, we ran everything on the free tier on Azure. So, um, you know, you, you're still seeing good results, um, which can get a lot better as long as you do your homework and get enough data for to train it. All right. Hopefully, uh, we'll, you know, learn something, you know, interesting or at least, you know, found that this is an interesting uh, way of doing things. Mm -hmm. All right. Have a wonderful day, everyone. And, uh, you know, we'll call it that.